Hello guys, this is Terry from Genki Gaming TV and I am coming back at you with Yokai Watch 2019 episode 4. I want to start off by apologizing for this being late. I also want to apologize because my editing software has left gaps on all of the screenshots I have, like empty white space. I apologize for that. I updated it and I also updated a little bit of my software in and of itself. You know, the, the every six month update that stuff eventually goes through. You guys get the point. I apologize for the quality being lackluster and it will hopefully not happen again. I'm going to try to fix this tomorrow. The reason why this review is late is because I've just been busy all weekend with family stuff and I just want to apologize for that. I've had the episode since sometime on Saturday to review. The Yokai Advisor was nice enough to link it to me again. We're diving into the review, though. In the beginning of the episode, we have Whisper kind of just in a panic. He ends up diving into the toilet because Yokai Law Shark means you gotta dive through the toilet. Nate picks up the plot device, I mean the Yokai Watch Elder, from the table and puts it on his wrist and he says something akin to I feel a little embarrassed to have forgotten this or to have not had this equipped already. Nate was in a little bit of a tizzy about money. He was looking for 500 yen which was approximately five dollars. It seems as if Nate wanted to get a manga. Nate comes to the conclusion, along with Whisper, that it is a possibility that a yokai may have taken the money. And with that in mind, they begin to simply just scan Nate's room. It takes a few moments, but they are able to find the yokai. This guy I am unfamiliar with. It is Okane Naida. Which I'm guessing it's a yokai from Yokai Watch 3, which is a game I should be playing right now. But between the internet, not the sites that I use, not having it in stock, like Amazon doesn't have it. I don't want a digital copy because I have the original Yokai Watch as a physical. You guys get the point. I, I like to collect stuff that I know I'm going to be playing multiple times through. So, moving on, they're like, oh, it must be this yokai's fault. So, they summon Shibanyan, who is all prepared for Nyan KB, the best idol group in the world, sporting a pink kimono like jacket, a headband, and a fan. Uh, Jibanyan complains a little bit about being taken away from the event. Nate apologizes for doing so. They try the one chance side. Jibanyan becomes super duper de duper de duper. Macho Jibanyan 80%, which is like Hyper Michi. Because it's a gag and the punch that this version of Jibanyan did wasn't able to get past the yen coin shield and then the yen dollar sign equivalent KOs him. So as things go on, our friendly new yokai just tells Nate, hey check your pocket, your 500 yen coin must be there, Nate. So he does, he finds the coin Whisper thinks this is a little bit of a hoax, and then this yokai starts talking about the Yoto coin, which is supposed to be a jab or a little parody of the Bitcoin. And at first, Whisper was testing it, but Okane Naida, now in a fancy suit, convinces Whisper it's a good idea. So. 
our new yokai friend bought tons of taco bars. Jabanion is quite content. And they get so rich, so rich that they have a helicopter, a company building, a stadium, even including Komasan and Komajiro selling ice cream. Guys, think a minute. Komasan selling soft serve. The soft serve will not last even a moment. Komasan has found something sweet and he wants it. The our friendly yokai Okane Naida tells us the backstory of his life about being poor, unable to buy juice or anything that he really wants. And then we see the rise and fall of this Bitcoin and it happened within mere moments. They went from being rich to being poor. Whisper in Okana Naida and they both kind of do a sad little comedy routine at the end. Whisper complains about not having toilet paper that is good enough for his bootay. And then we get the worst segment of them all, the Osan. The old guy bald headed wig club segment, which they need to stop doing that segment. It It's not funny. It's a waste of about 45 seconds. Moving on, Nyan, the Nyan King Dead, episode 2, also known as Hydabat is a chronic liar and cannot be trusted edition. Uh, I'm, I'm kidding about that, though, but you do not hide choco bars from Japanion or soft serve from Komajiro, because apparently both Komas love ice cream. How is Hydabat supposed to know? Hydabat just denies and denies the fact that he found Choco Bars and ice cream. Jibanyan, in his cautionary agility, tries to get back to where Hydabat is at, kicks a can that bounces all around the car, hitting the horn, alerting all of the zombies that surround the car and enter into the street. So Hadabat, Jibanyan, and Komajiro are hiding underneath the car, and Jibanyan accidentally unleashes the beast, aka he lets, he unleashes the worst fart ever. So Hadabat, in his intense wisdom, throws a choco bar and a ice cream out from underneath the truck. Jibanyan and Komajiro go for it until they realize there are zombies. And then we get a sequence of Komajiro stealing the car and running off without Jibanyan and Hadabat, both of whom seem super duper confused. So they're running from their, for their lives from the zombies. They end up running into an alleyway and getting cornered at the end. But not to worry, our handy dandy friendly neighborhood Komain Komasan to the rescue. Nothing can possibly go wrong. Komasan detaches the ladder and starts to go down to be able to save our friends. But the ladder completely detaches from the upper portion and it becomes like a bouncing set of stilts. So Komasan bounces out of view, out of the alleyway. The zombies were distracted there for just that particular moment. And then they turn back to Jibanyan and Hydabat. And then we get a to be continued thing. I really loved the statement. I feel like whoever's writing it deserves a raise. Everything feels right for this parody of The Walking Dead. So we get a transition to our four coma section of Komasan helping everyone out from grannies to people who seem like they're in distress. Komasan is a hero for me and for you. At least in the forecom. And I forgot to say, in the first segment, Tenohira Gaishi, or Shaki, smacks Whisper, and our new friend Okane Naida 
off into space. You know how like Team Rocket blasts off again. We have one of those moments with them. So we transition into the final segment of the video, which I feel like this segment could have used the 45 seconds from the uh, the wasted old man's wig club segment because I don't get why they even have that. I don't even think kids think that's funny. I feel like they just cringe, but we open up on a scene with Jibanyan, Sergeant Burley, and Blazion in their futile lord skins, or is what I would call futile lord skins, but it's from, I wish I could remember the name of the game, it's the feudal era RPG style game, where it's like an SRPG. So, yeah, and they basically unite together. All three of them raise their swords up, and then they all get in a bit of a, I won't say a tizzy, but they end up fighting themselves until someone comes asking them for help. And Jibanyan's like, team, we have to go help. It's what the good guys do, Nyan. And we get to see Komatsan and Komajiro in the segment as well. They look awfully dapper in their armor because Komains need armor, apparently. And our our trio of Jibanyan, Belazion, and Sergeant Borley meet a, another trio. The Gargaros trio of uh, the red, the blue, and the black version of Gargaros. I have to see. Okay, the blue is Ogarados, or the Aoi, or Aoni. And the black one, or the Kodo Oni, is Orkenos. I always get them mixed up, which is why I just loop them all together under Gargaros. I guess whenever you don't use them that often, you end up forgetting. So, yeah, but the Gargaros trio makes very quick work of our heroes. Quick to the point that the segment really could have used the 45 seconds. And what makes this situation even sadder is no one's updating the wiki. I I guess after they saw the Geezer's Wig Club segment, they're like, no way, man. I can't do this anymore. But all in all, the episode was probably a B plus or an A episode. It wasn't phenomenal, but the parts that were good make up for all of the parts that were... A uh, little inconsistent or parts that didn't quite have the flow the way I expected them to. I feel like we are close to an Yen KB episode. Even though it's early on with this only being episode 4, I feel like in my gut of guts that we'll, we'll see Jibani on marking out at a Yen KB concert because of how the beginning segment fanned out. I also feel like I want to give the person directing the anime a little bit of credit. The first segment was relatively smooth up until the sequence where, like, at the end, the last, I want to say the last 20 seconds of it, where they have that little bit of a comedy gag of Whisper complaining about not having the best toilet paper in the world. So, yeah. I want to thank you guys for watching the review. I hope you all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and or evening. I've been Terry with Ginky Gaming TV, and this is bye for now.